Hello, everybody. This is Kat. Welcome to Standing in Faith. I am in the studio with Jeff. Here I am. And David. Hi. And that's it. Just us. No extras today. Hopefully this, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, yes. oh, definitely. Of course. Yeah. yeah. John 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who's come from God, because nobody, nobody could do the miraculous signs that you're doing unless God were with him. In reply, Jesus declared, this is, he declared it, I like that, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Well, how can a man be born when he's old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he can't enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God unless he's born of the water and of the spirit. That's uh, mentioned in Ezekiel 36, by the way. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You shouldn't be surprised at me saying this, that you got to be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And I really like that in the first chapter of John, it already gives the answer of how. How, how can this be? It says, starting in verse 10, talking about Jesus, he was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, receive him, hmm. to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. So it was all who received him, who believed in his name. They had the right to become children of God. Mm, Born good. again. Yeah. So this is our series on being made new. Last time we talked about Old Covenant, New Covenant. And this time we're talking about being born again or the very first step of being made new. Um, and, of course, we start with the story of Nicodemus because that's probably what most people think of, although there's some other wonderful examples, New Testament examples of that, and we'll talk through that. But let's start with this idea of being born again. I really like Nicodemus. I mean, that's just so, well, how, did, what, being born again? What am I supposed to climb back up in? And Yeah. I mean, I'm full size. There's no way that can happen. <laughs> 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 that's a crazy image to have, but it's interesting that that's where he went. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. very literal. Yeah. Jesus is, no, 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 silly. I'm not talking about in the natural, right? And mm -hmm. Jesus says, I'm, I'm talking about in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So if I go back and thinking about the garden, right, surely you won't die. Well, something did die. Yeah. Right? Maybe not the physical, but that spiritual and the intimacy and that all of that just died at that point. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. to tie it back mm -hmm. to the last episode, required a covenant, right? A covenant of grace. And that's what Jesus is, is, is introducing here is that, that idea of being born again into the covenant of grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Romans 3, we might have read this last week, but it talks about um, the righteousness that the law and the prophets had testified about that was coming. You know, not the righteousness from the law, but it was coming. And it says, this righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, he'd left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. He did it to demonstrate his righteousness at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. And um, there's this cool prophecy in Isaiah 55 where it talks about, it's talking about Messiah and it's talking, oh, I didn't turn to it, but it's talking about God is going to make him to be a covenant for the people. And um, and so it's through Jesus that we're brought into that new covenant and that right relationship, that righteousness. And that's, you know, that's what makes us in a right relationship with God is Jesus is receiving him, like it says in John 1, receiving him, believing in his name. And it was, of course, later we'll read it um, out of 1 Peter, but we, I'm just going to read it now. I'm just going to do it now. This okay. is First Peter. It's written to God's elect, strangers in the world, scattered through all these places, who have been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. Again, that's mentioned in Ezekiel 36. For obedience to Jesus Christ and sprinkling by his blood. Sprinkling, that's, that's like that old covenant, that Mosaic covenant, they were sprinkled, but now we're sprinkled into this new covenant by Jesus' blood. And it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish. It can never spoil. It can never fade. Kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that's ready to be revealed in the last time. I like that. I like it because it's it's very succinct, mm-hmm. right? It's once you've received it, it can't be destroyed. It's eternal. It's mm-hmm. forever growing. Mm-hmm. Um, I I can't tell you how how disturbed I become when people start focusing on, oh, I need to be saved again. I need to be saved again. I need to be saved again. My spirit's just like, yeah, no, no, no. You were saved once done. It's saved. You've been sealed. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, that, that's, that, that's this idea that our sinful nature is still alive. Mm -hmm. Um, when in fact it, kind of really hasn't been but i don't want to jump too far ahead i kind of want to get back to this idea of being born again so it's that is almost like a resurrection right so back in the garden we kind of lost that there Mm -hmm. was death to that and now through jesus there's a resurrection of our spirit yeah so often it seems like we're focused on Especially at this time of year, right? Here here comes Manuel. Here comes our Savior, right? Oh, come let us adore him. I love that. Mm-hmm. Right? And then then at Easter time we're we're recognizing that his death, but it's that resurrection that's really, to me, a p- a component that often doesn't get enough focus. Yeah. Just as far as Jeff is concerned. Because what we're talking about is just that the resurrections of our spirit, mm-hmm. the the new you that's now living in you. Mm-hmm. Um, I get excited by that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. We talk about life, his life, his death, which is very important. His resurrection, which is hugely important. And often we leave off ascension because without ascension, there, there would go. be no Holy Spirit. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Right. So, you know, all of those components just play together so powerfully. Yeah. And um, because that's what quickens, quote, quickens us to believe anyway, is is the work of the Holy Spirit with our spirits awakening. Because what basically, like you've been saying in the garden, it, our, our spirit died. You know, it lost mm-hmm. its connection with God. 
Mm -hmm. And also, it created the fact that our bodies then deteriorated and died. Before Adam and Eve would have lived, they didn't have a deterioration process. Yeah. Um, huh. You know, at that time. And, and even what even makes it so cool is the idea that when Jesus died, his body lay in the tomb for three days before it was resurrected bodily. He, he was already going about doing stuff, but the bodily resurrection was that his body did not undergo any decay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the why? Because it was without sin. Yeah. It's right. Yeah. So right. It's, a, it's a sin that, that caused our bodies to ultimately decay and die. And in our spiritual connection with God, which created huge havoc, um, I mean, we saw it with the worlds and everything that, that because there was a flood to, to try and purge out the, the immense amount of evil that was coming as a result of, of, of man's lack of interest in the true and living God and so forth. And there's always, of course, a remnant of people like Noah and his family. Um, and that extends down a lot in a lot of ways through history because there's always that element of those who do believe uh who who do do walk with him and are are touched powerfully by the holy spirit where their spirits are made alive and that's what happens when we're quote born again or born new is that these these spirits that that god breathed into us that are not having any fellowship with him all of a sudden this deposit and power that comes in after he woos us and he woos us and he woos us to to do and you know we basically say okay yeah it's i want this god you know it's like he runs us down puts his foot in his, our throat and says do you and you go yeah you know i mean that's a little harsh in that way but i mean typically it's because he 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 woos us with love. Mm -hmm. You know, it's what it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Mm -hmm. That I think that's both in our salvation as well as afterwards. There's a constant thing of that goodness of God wooing us, bringing us back in many ways to to a place of repentance. But yeah, and and so all of a sudden, there's this newness of life and a whole new way of looking at everything. I don't know about y'all, but um, I remember the difference of of that light, darkness to light, was so uh, brilliant in my life that it was like, oh, this is a whole different reality. Yeah, yeah. you know, this isn't just about. Uh, Oh yeah, now I believe this is a whole different view. I, it, it began to you begin to grasp the the kingdom of God, the reign of God that God is it, it rules, you know, and, and and so you you begin to get an inkling of that. I think it, we're still very much children when we when that grace appears. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it. it it, it awakened, and I've, I've heard a lot of people say, you know what, I woke up the next day, and the grass was so green, and the trees were so beautiful, you know, because all of a sudden, and there were scales taken from their eyes, and they began to see, um, they began to see with, with awakened lives. They were no longer dead. Mm -hmm. What does Ephesians 2 say? You know, they were, that we were dead dead in our sins and our trespasses and there's your death mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you have to be born in you dead in your sins and your trespasses yeah, read that if you've got it as yeah. for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient all of us lived among them at one time gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, 
made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It's by grace that you have been saved. Yeah. There's that, there's that whole reality, of course, born in you, born, born from above. There's a lot of different words, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that, that, it, that can be used from that, born from above, because that's exactly what happens. This whole new transformation um, begins to take place in us. Mm-hmm. And justified freely, you read that, that we're justified freely by his grace. Well, what does justified mean? It's a big word, but in, in a simplistic kind of a way, it means just as if I had never sinned. I mean, it, it's like this amazing total cleansing of everything in our lives takes place in that moment. And mm-hmm. we're... We're fresh. We're new. We're new creations. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, it's interesting to me because Kat read this, and it's something that I've been pondering and thinking over for years. But in John 1, 12, I'm going to read it again. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God not born of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So it's, that's pretty clear that it's, it's God's doing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's, not, it's not us in the natural. Um, it, so many times you, you hear people say, oh, tell me about when you accepted Jesus. It, it almost feels like, well, I, I kind of feel like, tell me when you were chosen might be a better way to say that. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because yeah. it's by God's will that you can call him a son or, mm-hmm. or you're a, a son or a daughter. So, mm-hmm. therefore, when did he choose you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when you go back to that Ezekiel 36, it's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take out your old heart and put in a new one. I'm going to give you a new spirit. It's, it's all these things that he's going to do. Did you read that yet? Which? The Ezekiel passage. Um, No. Read it. Well, so you're going to have to look it up. Well. Oh, I thought you had what, it. There. Well, what I have on this paper is uh-huh. I went through Ezekiel 36. Yeah. And I pulled out. I just wrote it on a piece of paper. I just pulled out all these things that God said he's going to do. All the I will. Just so I could look at it on a piece of paper oh, in bigger well, cool. bigger read font. Yeah, read that. All right, here we go. This is, uh, says, I will take you out of the nation. This is also to the house of Israel, mm-hmm. you know, which we're grafted in. I'll take you out of the nations. I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you. You will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities. I will cleanse you from all your idols. I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone. I will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you. I will move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave your forefathers. You will be my people. I will be your God. I will save you from all your uncleanness. I will call for grain and make it plentiful. I will not bring famine upon you. I will increase the fruit of the trees and crops of the field, so you will no longer suffer disgrace among the nations because of famine. You will remember your evil ways and wicked deeds and loathe yourselves for your sins and detestable practices. There's a lot of promises in there. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of promises. Mm -hmm. I like it. I will. And we are really going to just remember. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's not like I might. It's I will. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's faithful. Mm -hmm. We may break our vows, but he does not break his Mm -hmm. vows. And even, I think it's in Peter or something where he's like, look, all those things like the the prophets, he— Pay close attention. Those promises are not over. I can't remember. Let's see. That's good. That's good. So Mm -hmm. let's ask some questions here. So um, how how do you actually become born again? Uh, Here's something I I haven't had time to research. It's it's in the beginning of John. Um, it says, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name. And I kind of wanted to go through and be like, 
you know, we've done kind of thing with like the names of God. And I was wondering, well, with Jesus, because I know it was like they were supposed to name him that because he will save his people from their sins. And I started wondering, well, what are the different things that have to do with the name of Jesus or the name of the Messiah or the name of, uh, you know, like that? Because it's not just, oh, I believe that he is the Messiah, but what does that mean? Like, you're really believing in what that what he is or you got an insight with that well the, you know the interesting thing about names you know we i'm david why are your cat and you're you know um in in those days a name had all the kinds of implications mm-hmm. in and and who a person was and and what they were about it it, 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 it's hard for us to conceive this, but when we think of a name in the name of Jesus, it's not like a, just a, oh, a Jesus name, you know, if we believe that name, no, it's believing who he is, it's believing in all that he did, it's believing, um, uh, in his identity. It, yeah, exactly. It's, it's more than just a name, it's identity, what you're talking about. He okay. is who he says he is. Well, exactly. And a good example of that is in Book of Revelation where it talks about we will have his name written on our heads and on our hands. Well, it also talks about the the mark of the beast will be on their heads and on their hands. What does that imply? It implies that all your thinking processes, mm. we will have the mind of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And our right hand is our actions, what we do. So it, that's what it bears. The, the fruit that it bears is because he is, has, has captured us and, and it's, we've become this new creation, our actions then will represent that as a result. So everything about his name is, yeah, his identity. He's the son of God. Um, he, you know, he... he sends forth the Holy Spirit, everything that we we think of and the amazing power that's behind that name, not just as an incantation or yeah. Jesus word, but it's the whole kingdom and, and beauty of God that's enveloped in the name of Jesus, the Messiah. You know, so, Jesus was a common name back yeah. in the day. But as to many as believe in my name. Well, in other words, to as many as believe in me and everything I represent. That's mm-hmm. what that's what he's saying when it talks about his name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I like that. So people who are born again, that's one of the fruits you could see is their thoughts, their actions come into alignment with his name. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me of the... Um, the parable of the ten minas in Luke 19, it's where um, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. And there was this delegation, it says his subjects hated him, and they sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this guy to be our king. And at the end, of course, he does become king, and he comes back. And at the end of the parable, he says, um, take those that didn't want me to be king and kill them in front of me. But I guess that's kind of like that, like what you just said. They didn't believe. They were like, no, we don't want him to be king. They were, they were rejecting, you know, and kingship is, is part of Jesus' name. They were rejecting that kingship. Yeah, they were rejecting the whole kingdom. The whole kingdom, yeah. the kingship, yeah. the everything. Exactly. If you reject the king, you reject his kingdom. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's what they did. They said, okay, we don't want any part of this kingdom. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're outside of that kingdom, then you're an enemy to the king. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, in looking at it, it almost sounds like, ooh, that's really difficult. But, but in essence, it's, it, it goes right back into the, the whole beginning. If you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. Well, if you reject the fruit, you know, if you, in other words, if you reject this, this, the, what is the fruit now? It's uh, the tree of life. If you reject the tree of life, which is Jesus, if you reject that, 
then you're going to die. Yeah. It's not just a matter of we're going to put the sword to you or whatever. You're going to die. That's all there is to it because there's no other there's no other resource. To be born in you means you brought into life, eternal life. Yeah. Not just, oh, Rosie, Dad, this is great. No, you're brought into eternal life. Mm-hmm. And so if you if you continue throughout your life saying, no, nah, I don't want this, I, I reject that, then what you're, what you're doing is say, okay, I don't want to be part of that kingdom. Well, the alternative is to be part of the kingdom of darkness that will perish in the end. Yeah. 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 But God. But God, who is rich in mercy. Mm-hmm. And because of his great love for you. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what's so yeah. awesome about that. Yeah. So let, let's go back to where we started. This is John 3, 5. And Jesus, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is that? Born of water and what is born of spirit? In Ezekiel 36, it mentions the um, God sprinkling clean water on you. So whatever that cleaning is, he mentions water in there and he mentions putting his spirit in you. Those two things, water and spirit, are mentioned in Ezekiel 36, talking about the new covenant. So, so when, you, when you do believe in Jesus and who he was and confess that, mm-hmm. he then promises to cleanse you. Is mm-hmm. that the born of water? That's what... So you're cleansed at that point of all sin, like we've just discussed? Okay. Well, there was, you know, the whole, the whole nature of the cleansing, different cleansings that were done, even in the temple. Um, there was multiple different baptisms, you know, for for different uh, uh, things. It's like John had a baptism for repentance. That was John the Baptist, and his was a, a baptism for repentance to turn. You know, turn away from your wickedness and, and yeah, get baptized. So that it was a representation uh, that water is a cleansing factor. Um, does, does water actually do the cleansing? No, it's more representative of being cleaned because it's the blood that actually cleanses us from all sin. Um, but the water is a representation there that, that, we take a bath, we get clean, you know. And so there is this sense of, of water and spirit. You also could look at the, uh, the tabernacle. Um, the, before you could enter into the holy place or the holy of holies, there was a big uh, uh, basin of water mm-hmm. where there was the cleansing. You had, to, you had to cleanse yourself of everything before you could enter into the holy place where, guess what? The Holy Spirit was. Yeah. So there is this nature of, of water and spirit. And spirit. Yeah, and those, all, that old, all those old things are to teach us these spiritual principles, so what I, you just mentioned. So I guess I'm thinking, all right. Oh, I got a question. I'm a non-believer. I'm listening to us have this conversation. All right, so what do I have to do to be born again? Do I have to get baptized? Well, in Acts, those Gentile believers, they were given the Holy Spirit before they were baptized. Remember when Peter went? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, and they were like, these these guys are Gentiles. Like, what? You know, like, I thought— I thought Ezekiel 36 was to the house of Israel. Like, what's with these Gentiles and God's pouring his Holy Spirit? Like, well, I guess they can be baptized then because <laughs> they got already got the Holy Spirit. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. What was your question? My question was, Are you mentioned it like, oh, are we cleansed from our sins? I just wondered, Are is cleansing from our sins a process or an immediate thing? Because we still always will struggle with sin. And we so we might have idols in our heart we don't even know about, it. and like you know, a year later, you know, like maybe somebody gets saved and they don't even realize something's an idol. And but so I know there's like the process of um, sanctification or whatever where God's cleaning these things out of mm-hmm. you. But 
are you clean from them or are you being cleaned from them? Or is it kind of like both? Kind of like both. I, I would – this is the way I think about your question. So when I'm – when I'm being born again, mm -hmm. my spirit is resurrected and, and new. Mm -hmm. That part is clean. Mm -hmm. Now, I still have a very natural body with a soul, a mind, and a heart that have been through however many years of learning and experiencing. And some of the things that I learned are true, and some of them aren't. They're mm -hmm. lies. Mm -hmm. So... I have this this natural soul and a body and a spirit. So my spirit's clean. Now my natural soul needs to work through the process hmm. of correcting the lies, uh, better learning what my true identity is, mm -hmm. um, becoming me mm -hmm. rather than necessarily what the world may have made me or labeled me as mm -hmm. um and then there's there's my heart which has got some i mean it's wounded we live in a fallen world and our hearts get wounded and mm -hmm. we need those heart those heart aches if you will to be healed and touched mm -hmm. so when you're talking about cleansing the natural part of me my soul and my body mm -hmm. i believe that that's what sanctification is it's the process of working that which your spirit has already acquired ah. into your soul. That's a good explanation. I think, too, that we have to recognize, <clears throat> you know, in response to your question is, is um, our sins are forgiven, I mean, mm -hmm. forever. Uh, in him, and this is Ephesians 1, 7, in him we have redemption. Um, through his blood the remission or forgiveness of our, our offenses our sins in accordance with the riches of his generosity his grace so in him we have redemption it's not like we will have redemption mm -hmm. we have it we have been we have the, uh, the price has been paid for for us we belong to God um it's it's done. So God looks at us now, and and He sees He sees the completed work. We don't see the completed work. Yeah. We still look at all of the little faults. And, and like He was talking about, is this this constant working out of 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 stuff. It, it's not about trying to get the old man saved. The old man is dead. It was crucified with Christ. Yeah. But there are all of these, quote, lies that are in our mind and, and stuff that God is trying to renew to get us to think differently. And uh -huh. that's the constant work of sanctification ongoing in our life, mm -hmm. although it says that we have already been sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That means we're holy. We're set apart to God. Yeah. In this set apartness, though, God is also trying to create something that causes us to be able to live more abundantly while we're on this earth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is getting rid of the lies and the different things that lead us into down little tracks and places that, that get us in trouble and, and all that. But it doesn't change God's grace to us of forgiveness. Yeah. I guess if God is outside of time to him, we are mm. both. He's, he's not seeing us. We're, we exist in time. But he's outside of time, so mm -hmm. he sees mm -hmm. us completely as a new creation, mm -hmm. completely everything done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you said something which I found I'm just made me jump, right? But if I go to um, Hebrews 9, 12, not with the blood of goats— and the blood of calves, but with his own blood, he, being Jesus, entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. A little bit further down in, in Hebrews 10.10, 10, by that we have been sanctified 
through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. What I find really interesting in there, it didn't say once and for Israel. It didn't say once and for Gentiles. It said once and for all. Mm-hmm. This this is available mm-hmm. to all. Yes. Right? Which, so that implies to me that it's simply believing Jesus was who he said he was, and now you're in mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and not out. So there's this there's this choice mm-hmm. of be, you, you're in or you're out. Mm-hmm. There's no medium. There's no lukewarm. There's no sitting on the fence. You're in or you're out. And it comes simply by believing Jesus in Jesus that he was the son of God. And I guess God, who is the judge of our hearts, he would know if you really believed or not. Because, you know, like the parables of the soil, there were some who were like, yay, woo But then when a time of testing came, they fell away. So, but God, when he, I guess it's like if you really, he knows. And then he would be the one to put his spirit in you if you really truly believed or you were just like one of those other soils or whatever, like we were talking about in the last season. So it may be worth another episode or talking through, but that is, how do you get that spirit in you? Is it, is it through the belief? Is it through a baptism of water? Is it through a baptism of the spirit? Um, What, what is that? What are the differences? Well, we already know it doesn't have to be water because of those, those people in Acts that got the Holy Spirit before mm. they got baptized in water. Well, look at the, look at the um, uh, thief beside Jesus. You know, he didn't get baptized. I don't mm-hmm. know if he got the Spirit, did he? But he said, but Jesus well, there was, said, you'll the see. Spirit hadn't come yet. Yeah, but he believed. He yeah, believed. But he, he believed. believed. But he believed. And was in paradise. Yeah. yeah. He believed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's just all interesting. And, and, and you don't really have to need to get technical. I think the biggest thing is... If you say you're listening to us right now and you, you say, you know what, I really do, I really do want to be born anew or born again. I want this kind of a relationship with God because what it really does is it just opens up this intimate relationship with God, that, that ability because then his spirit becomes one spirit with ours. Mm-hmm. He walks in. The moment you say yes, he walks in, and, and, and we become one spirit with him. And that's why you said earlier, my spirit's good. It's because, yeah, because it's one spirit with him. 1 Corinthians one sixteen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it makes sense to me that in that, it, if it, it, it should just be a very simple thing. You're sitting there saying, how, how in the <clears throat> world can I do all this? I think it's very simple. Do you want? Is this something you want? Mm-hmm. You know, and I think it's it. it you, you know, I've heard people in many. You know, Jesus, if you're really real, then I want you to come, come into my heart, come into my life, whatever. Um, I believe. Yeah, I believe. You know, um, you know, forgive me for for my sins, which He does, and come into my life. Come in, just walk. You're welcome. It, it, to me, it's surrender. It's, it's what you're saying is, I surrender to you, God. In essence. Yeah. You're, you're throwing your hands up. You're throwing away your weapons. You're throwing away. It's just, I, 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 you know what? I just surrender. You you're be God. my king. You be my king. Yeah. In Isaiah 55, it says, seek the Lord. Seek Jesus while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, Mm -hmm. declares the Lord. Let's bless the listeners. Mm -hmm. So, Father... I bless the listeners, and I 
put your name on them and say, anyone who's listening, we bless you with the salvation of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.